الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه أما بعد We continue discussing some of the important issues related to combining combining the prayers and shortening the prayers. We have seen that shortening the prayers, this is called Al-Qasr. And to pray them properly is, is called at its man at its man to pray to shorten the prayer is called al-qasr and to pray them in the normal manner is called at its man and we have seen that al-qasr is from the specific traits of a safar of traveling the specific traits of traveling. And that, and a jama' combining the prayers is not specific to traveling. And jama' is specific to al mashaqqa or haraj, the hardship, uh, or the difficulty. So combining the prayers is not specific to, to traveling. And it's not from the traits uh, or the the rulings that are related directly to traveling, and it's not something that one will perform every time and all the time while he's traveling. As for al qasr, then this is from the specific traits of traveling, and the one who is traveling, he will make qasr all the time, and this is what is pre- what is preferred. And uh, the people of Nara, as they mentioned that the qasr. Uh, it is uh, it is uh, sunnah mu'akkidah it is sunnah mu'akkidah it's highly recommended it's highly recommended that a person while he is traveling he will uh, he will always shorten the dhuhr prayer to two raka and the asr prayer to two raka and the isha prayer to two raka and there's a consensus that the Fajr and the Maghrib, they stay the same and they do not change. So the Qasr, it will be with regards to Salawat al Rubaiya, the prayers that have four units, yani four raka'at. And uh, this is what is, uh, this is what is highly recommended. Some of the people of knowledge have even mentioned that uh, it's an obligation. Allah knows best, it's a ruhsa. And it is mustahabba, rather it is sunnah mu'akkidah, and it's disliked to leave it. And it's disliked to leave it. So when one is traveling, it's disliked for him to make at its man. It's disliked for him to make uh, at its man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, وَإِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَقْصُرُوا مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ إِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَنْ يَفْتِنَكُمُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in, in his book that if you travel in the land, uh, if, you, if you travel through the land, and if you begin traveling through the land, then there is no blame on you for, for you to shorten the prayer. There's no blame on you for, to, for you to shorten the prayer. If you are afraid that the disbelievers will try you or test you, Verily the disbelievers, they are a clear enemy to you. They are a clear enemy to you. So in this noble verse, in Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the, per- the permissibility of, uh, of shortening the prayers. Here what is uh, apparent in the verse is that it's coupled with fear. In khiftum, and yaftinakum alladhina kafaru. If you are afraid that the disbelievers will try you. But... Uh, Ya'la ibn Umayyah radiyallahu anhu he came to Umar and he asked about this and he asked about this he says why, why do we uh, do we continue to shorten the prayer even though we're not afraid from the disbelievers anymore even though we're not afraid from the disbelievers anymore so Umar radiyallahu anhu he says ajibtu mimma ajibta minhum wa sa'atu rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
and that he said, I was amazed at the same thing that you were amazed with, any the fact that we continue to shorten the prayer while traveling, even though we do not fear anymore from the enemy, and because at this time they had authority in the land, so they were, they would travel and they would not fear the enemy, and the disbelievers and the likes like this, but they continue to shorten, and this was the case of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam likewise. So he said, so I Omar he said, I was uh, uh, I was. Uh, Curious or wondering about the same affair that you're that you're asking about. So I asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said, "Tilka sadaqatun, tasadaqa biha Allahu alaykum faqbilu sadaqatahu." That this is a charity that Allah has given you. So therefore, accept His charity. So therefore, accept His charity. And this is a, uh, from the ease of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and something that Allah has made light in the religion, and uh, one he should accept that. And uh, from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that he would always, is that he would always shorten the prayer while he's traveling. This is what is indicated in the in the Hadith of Ibn Umar that the author he mentioned, radiyallahu anhuma. Sahib to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. فكان لا يزيد في السفر على ركعتين. وأبو بكر وعمر وعثمان كذلك. He said, I accompanied the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam while traveling, and he, uh, and he did not use to increase. Uh, more than two rakah, and likewise Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, and he meaning he accompanied he he accompanied all of them, and this was their methodology while they were traveling, is that uh, the prayers that had four rakah they would shorten them, they would all shorten them. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and continue upon that way after him, uh, the, uh, Abu Bakr and Umar and uh, and Uthman, radiyallahu, uh, radiyallahu anhum. So this is uh, the case here, the muwalaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and likewise the khulafa after him, the khulafa al-rashidun after him, indicating that this is something that is highly recommended. Indicating that this is something uh, that is, is highly recommended. And likewise, it's a sadaqah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, faqbilu sadaqat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so therefore accept that. And likewise, it's corrected by Imam Ahmad in, in the Musnad, from the hadith of Ibn Umar as well, Ali Allahu anhuma, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Allaha yuhibbu an tu'ta rukhasuhu kama yuhibbu an tu'ta azaimu. That verily Allah azza wa jalla, he loves that his rukhas, yani the, the, the licenses and uh, permissibility to lighten uh, the issues that come in certain circumstances like this, this is considered a rukhsa, to shorten the prayer. So uh, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that already Allah, he loves that you take, that, that his rukhas, his licenses and his, the, 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 the permissibility uh, uh, of lightening the, the rulings in certain circumstances, he loves that those are taken just as he loves that the obligations are, are taken, and meaning fulfilled. So therefore this is something that is beloved to Allah. And this is from the ease uh, of al-Islam and the legislation of al-Islam that is easy. And that is facilitated, and that in times of hardness, uh, uh, hardship, uh, ease will come. So therefore, uh, it is Sunnah Mu'akida. Sunnah Mu'akida. Also, it has been narrated uh, by Aisha radiyallahu anha, corrected by Al Bukhari and Muslim, that she said, "Furidat salatu rakataini rakataini fil hadari wa safar, fawqirat salatu safari wa zida fi salat al hadar." That she mentioned radiyallahu anha that. The salat it was legislated and made obligatory two raka two raka like this and in the beginning it was only two raka and then after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated to Al Madina she mentioned Rabbi Allahu anha that the uh, any the, the prayer was was legislated two raka in uh, for residents and also for travelers and while being a resident and while traveling and then whenever the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he migrated to Al Madina. The, the prayer of the traveler, it stayed the same. It remained the same. Any meaning to raka. It remained the same. And uh, as for the prayer of the resident, then it was increased. Then it was, it was increased. So therefore, it's dislike for a person to make its mam while he's traveling. Meaning to pray for raka. For the dhuhr or the asr or the, the isha. Rather, what is highly recommended and preferred for him is to pray too is to pray to, to suffice with that, and to accept the charity of Allah Azza wa Jalla and to take this license, this rukhsa, and uh, abide by the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This, uh, but, but if he were to make al-itmam, then the prayer is correct. 
but the people of knowledge they mentioned that is disliked. And if he made its mem, then the prayer is correct, but he performed an action that is disliked and Allah knows best. The people of knowledge they mentioned with regards to the sefer that is allowed for the qasr, the one to shorten the prayer. This is a sefer al mubah. A sefer al mubah. We all know what a sefer means. What is a sefer al mubah? Uh huh. Huh? Permissible traveling. Meaning somebody who's traveling to perform something that is permissible and allowed. Meaning somebody who's traveling to perform something that is permissible and allowed. Whether it's from the affairs of the dunya and um, getting uh, tijara or business or trade. Or whether it's for an action of worship like seeking knowledge or going to make hajj or to visit relatives. Uh, whatever the case uh, may be. Uh, so long as it's allowed, then this and either the traveling is allowed, and the intention for traveling is is allowed, then it's allowed for him to shorten the prayer and to take the ruchas of safar. As for the one who is traveling in order to disobey Allah, wadiyadu billah, then it is not allowed for him to uh, to shorten his prayer and to take the ruchas of traveling, to take the ruchas of traveling, and Allah knows best. The people of Nala, as they mentioned with regards to disobedience and traveling. They say that there's two types, al asi fi safar al asi fi safar wa al asi bi safar al asi fi al safar yani fi athna al safar wa al asi bi safar There's a difference between the two. Al asi means uh, the disobedient, the one who is uh, his disobedient. What is the opposite of that? Al muti'u al muti'u so the one who is disobedient while traveling, it's allowed for him to take the rukhsa. It's allowed for him to take the rukhsa. The one who's disobedient while traveling. He's traveling uh, to do something that is allowed. He's traveling for business, for example, a, a business that's halal, to make a transaction that's allowed and permissible. This is the purpose while he's traveling. On that travel, he fell into backbiting or he fell into some type of sin. And the likes like this, it's still allowed for him to take the rukhsa of traveling. We understand that? Because he's traveling to do something that's permissible and allowed, he's disobeying Allah during his traveling. As for al asi bis safar, the one who's disobeying Allah by way of safar, by way of traveling, meaning that his only intention to travel is to, is to disobey Allah. His intention to travel is to, is to meet a woman, or to, to get some drugs or alcohol, or whatever the case may be, or to perform a business transaction that is haram and impermissible. The whole purpose of his travel, the reason why he's traveling is haram and not allowed. It's haram and not allowed. The people of not as I mentioned for this person, it's not allowed for him to take the rukhsa. It's not allowed for him to take the rukhsa. What is incumbent upon him is to repent to Allah Azza wa Jal immediately and to leave off this foul intention. And if he repented and he left off that intention, then it would be allowed for him. But so long as he has this intention to travel, to to, 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 to disobey, and to travel with the purpose of disobedience, then it's not allowed for him. Then it's not allowed for him. And uh, the evidence for this is uh, likewise uh, the narration of Umar that has preceded, uh, radiyallahu anhu, and that is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Sadaqa tunta sadaqa Allahu biha alaykum faqbilu sadaqat Allah azza wa jal. Aw faqbilu sadaqatahu. That this is a charity that Allah has, uh, has given you. Has given you. It's a charity. That Allah has given you. So therefore accept the charity of Allah. So one, he will not use the charity of Allah to disobey Allah. And he will not uh, seek aid in the sadaqah of Allah and the ruqsa of Allah in order to disobey him. In order to disobey him. You understand that? So this is the case with regards to the one uh, who is disobeying Allah by traveling. And he's traveling to disobey Allah. He does not deserve nor have the right to use uh, this ruqsa and to accept this sadaqah. And to accept the sadaqah. As for the one who is traveling uh, to do something that is allowed, then even if he fell into disobedience during that, but the purpose of his travel is permissible, then it's allowed for him and Allah knows best. Then it's allowed for him and Allah knows best. Another issue with regards to the affair of traveling is that one, uh, he will not pray ar rawatib while he's traveling. While he's traveling, he will not pray ar rawatib and he, he, he will leave those. Ar-Rawatib, they're the non-obligatory prayers, the sunnah, the sunnah prayers that are coupled with the obligatory prayers that come before and after. 
the obligatory prayers. One, while he's traveling, he will leave these. He will leave these and he will not pray them, except for the Fajr. And also along with those, and he's not from the Rawatib, but also that which he will not leave from the non-obligatory prayers is the Witr. Is the Witr. So if he were traveling, he will continue to pray the Sunnah of Fajr. As for the Sunnah of Dhuhr, before and after, and the Sunnah of uh, of Maghrib after and likewise after Isha then he will leave those and he will not pray them then he will leave those and he will not pray them and uh, this is the case here because he's already sh he's already shortened his obligatory prayer he's already shortened his obligatory prayer so therefore to uh, add on top of that the non-obligatory prayers this is any contrary to the to the purpose and to the intent of shortening this is contrary to the purpose and intent of, of shortening. Maybe if he prayed Dhuhr two Raka and then after that he prayed two Muraka for the Sunnah, somebody might think he didn't even uh, shorten his prayer. In any case, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he left the Rawatib, this Rawatib, uh, while, while traveling. While traveling. It has come likewise from Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhumah, that he was asked about this. That he was asked about this. And he, about praying the 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 nawafil or the rawatib they're also called the the subha yani the the non obligatory uh prayers and he said of the allah anhu law kuntu musabbihan la atmamtu law kuntu musabbihan la atmamtu that if i was going to pray the non obligatory prayers then i would have completed my prayer then i would have completed my prayer I meaning the fact that i'm shortening my prayer is an indication that i'm not going to pray the non obligatory prayer likewise that I'm not going to pray the non-obligatory prayer likewise. So this is the, this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to leave off these. As for the sunnah of Fajr, this one it remains, and he will never leave that sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And likewise, the witr, not while traveling and, and not while a resident. Yani kana yuwalibu ala hadhihi salawat. Yani al Fajr, sunnah al Fajr, and also witr. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is what has. Uh, indicated that these non-obligatory prayers here are sunnah mu'akkidah, that they're highly recommended, that they're highly recommended. As for the rest of the, the rawatib, he will leave them. As for the duha and uh, the lice like this, or praying after uh, the adhan and before the iqama, yani al-nawafil al-mutlaqa, then this is allowed. Then this is allowed. And if a person, he wanted to pray, uh, a non-obligatory prayer to just to pray for example between the adhan and the aqama or if you wanted to pray any other non-obligatory prayer that's not attached to the, the rawatib it's allowed for him and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can yusalli al-nafila al-rahila haythu tawajjahat bihi that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray the non-obligatory prayer on his riding animal wherever it's directed and uh, this has uh, been affirmed that he would also pray uh, any the the nafil and mutlaq sometimes while traveling sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is allowed. So this is allowed. Uh, there's an exception when the the traveler he will pray bid its mam that he will pray all, all four prayers. There's an exception to this. We mentioned here that is that is highly recommended to shorten the prayer and is disliked to to complete the prayer while traveling. Except in the case whenever the traveler prays behind the muqim. If the musafir salla wara'a al muqim. Al muqim is the resident. Al muqim is the resident and the musafir he's the traveler. So if the the musafir he prays behind the muqim, he must. It's an obligation for him to make it its ma'am. It's an obligation for him to make it its ma'am. Even if the musafir, for example, he came to the dhuhr prayer. And he caught the imam in the after the first tashahud, or in the first tashahud, and then he, meaning that he prayed with the imam to raka. Someone may think, "Well, I'm traveling, so now I, I catch these two raka. What's upon me is to raka because I'm a traveler, and I'll suffice with this and make salam with the imam." This is not correct. Whether it's an obligation for him, uh, it's an obligation for him to to follow the imam and to complete that. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned وَمَا أَدْرَكْتُمْ فَصَلُّوا وَمَا أَفَاتِكُمْ فَقْفَقْضُوا أو فَأَتِمُوا Whatever you catch, then you pray, and whatever you make up, uh, whatever you miss, you make it up. Whatever you miss, you make it up. And likewise, uh, with regards to Uthman, radiallahu anhu, it's mentioned here that he was from those who Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu, he witnessed that he always shortened the prayer 
while traveling. And uh, that's in a general sense, but it had occurred specifically in Mina, and that uh, he had uh, an ishtihad, Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhuma, and he prayed in his khilafah for approximately eight years in the manner uh, in Mina, in Mina, while he was the emir of Hajj, in the, day, in the days of, uh, of Mina. And uh, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he shortened the prayer then. And likewise, Abu Bakr and Umar as well, radiallahu anhum, they shortened the prayer then. But then it came to Uthman, he had an ijtihad, and he completed them. He started to complete them yani the, the, in this time, in the days of Hajj and Mina. And uh, even it's mentioned that whenever this reached Abdullah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Yani that they, they did not agree with that. It was an ishtihad from him, but they did not agree with that. And many, many of the companions, they did, they did not uh, agree with that position. But also has come from, as has come from Ibn Mas'ud, that, that they prayed behind him. They prayed behind him, but it's ma'am. And Ibn Mas'ud, he said, to, 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 to disagree and to have dissension is evil and wickedness. So therefore, even though they dislike that, they prayed behind Uthman, radiallahu anhu. We understand the situation now? What's the wajhu al-istidlan? Wajhu al-istidlan. What is the, or the point of evidence? How can we use this? The, the people of knowledge, they use this as a proof now that it's, uh, it's an obligation to, to follow, to, to, uh, to complete. Uh-huh. Ibn Mas'ud, uh-huh. now. Uh-huh. But they didn't. They followed. So therefore, since they followed, then they followed the imam in this, even though they, did, they didn't prefer that. They didn't prefer that. So from this, then you, what, the evidence is that this uh, is an obligation for the, uh, for, for, to follow the imam. To follow, to follow the imam. Lali kharatu al-masala. Uh-huh. The, 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 this evidence here is if the proof for the, 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 the qasr is not wajib. Naam. Zakallah khayra. This evidence here, the fact that Uthman radiallahu anhu, he, he did this and the companions, they, they pray behind him. This is an indication that the qasr is not wajib. And he, some of the people of not, as they mentioned, that the qasr uh, is wajib. And uh, if it had been wajib, then uh, the companions, and they believe that, then the companions, they, wouldn't, they would not have... Uh, followed Uthman they would not have followed Uthman so the fact that he went they, they, even though they disliked it and he to do that but they followed behind him and they prayed with it, its man this is an indication that it is not uh, it is not an obligation it's not an obligation so therefore therefore it is it is disliked therefore it is disliked what was the other masala before that Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Sahih. Uh-huh. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned the hadith that has preceded us. The Imam he was only made to be followed. The Imam he was only made to be followed. So this likewise is from the evidences that indicate any the the, the Masala before that that the the one who is musafir, if he prays behind the muqim, he will he will pray in the manner of the muqim, and he will complete. Inna majur ila alimamu liyutama bihi liyutama bihi. Nam. Likewise, it was uh, corrected by uh, Alimam Ahmed uh, from the hadith of Ibn Abbas and Ali Allahu anhuma that he was asked. Ibn Abbas and Ali Allahu anhuma he was asked uh, about the issue of uh, praying behind the the muqim. And they said, how come whenever we pray uh, behind the imam, we complete our prayer, but whenever we pray alone by ourselves in, uh, in our dwellings or in our tents or whatever, in our, in our residence, the place where we're residing, we shorten our prayer. And how come whenever we pray with the imam, we, we, we complete our prayer, and whenever we're praying to, by ourselves, any us travelers, we shorten our prayer. So Ibn Abbas, and uh, Huma, he said, Tilka sunnatu Abi al-Qasim. Tilka sunnatu Abi Al Qasim. He said, "This is the Sunnah of Abi Al Qasim, meaning the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So this is the evidence here with regards to that. 
And he established that this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So therefore, this is what is obligatory. Therefore, this is what is what is obligatory. If when he prays as a, a musafir behind the muqim, he has to complete uh, the prayer entirely, even if he only cut one rakah, or even if he only cut any uh, two rakah, for example. In any case, he has to complete uh, the the prayer entirely. He has to complete the prayer uh, entirely. Likewise, uh, with regards to combining the prayers, we have seen that uh, the issue with regards to combining the prayers, the Sunnah is that while one is on the road traveling, one while one is on the road traveling, this is the time for combining. And this is the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he would combine the prayer. Yani ida jadda bihi asayr, or ida kana ala zahri sayr. Meaning, if he is during the traveling, while he's on the road, while he's on the road, so this is the time to to gather. This is because there's a hardship there. This is because there's a hardship there. But uh, when to combine, whether it is a uh, taqdim or taqhir, this goes back to what is easiest for the, for the traveler. This goes back to what is easiest for the traveler. So if it's easy for him to combine in the first time, he would do that. And while he's on the road, and if it's easier for him to combine later in the second time, then he would do that, so long as he's on the road. As for if he is still traveling, but he is not on the road, Meaning he has taken up, uh, and he, he's relaxing or he's resting or he's staying overnight and the likes like this, then what is preferred at this time is to not, is to not gather the prayer, is to not combine the prayer, but rather to pray each prayer in the proper time, but rather to pray each prayer in the proper time, but he will shorten them, but he will shorten them. And this is also from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the four days before Hajj and Hajj al Wada, this was the case whenever he was in Abtah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That uh, in those days He would shorten that prayer And he would pray each one At its proper time And likewise Whenever he was in Mina In Mina as well He would shorten that prayer But he would pray them At their proper times And then when on Arafah Of course he made Jem'at Taqdeem And this was in order For them to have uh, Free time to, to worship Allah And to stand on the day of Arafah And to supplicate And to call to Allah Azza wa Jal So this was the, the From the wisdom behind that And likewise uh, in Muzdarifa, he gathered between Maghab and Isha sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then whenever he's in Mina and he's resting, in those days, uh, and the days uh, 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 of Eid, and likewise uh, Tashriq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he's re residing there in Mina and he's resting during his travel in those days, not moving around, then he would uh, shorten the prayer and he would not combine them. And he would not combine them. But likewise it has come... And he, and authentically in narrations in the in the Ghazwa of Tabuk, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was uh, they were traveling of course in this excursion, military excursion, and uh, but they were not on the road, and they were not in, during the actual movement of the travel, rather they were residing in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he would uh, at one time or one day he uh, he had uh, delayed the prayer and then he came out. Uh, and he prayed uh, and he gathered the prayers together he gathered the prayers together and while he is uh, while he is and he residing there in the tent and, he, and then he he went back so this is an indication that it's allowed so therefore if a person he were to gather the prayers and he to combine the prayers if a person he were to combine the prayers while for example it's in the hotel he's traveling and overnight he stops in a hotel the, now the sunnah for him is to is to shorten the prayer and to not combine them. But if he were to combine them, it's allowed for him. Even if he has no hardship whatsoever and he is not facing difficulty, if you combine them, it's allowed for him. But what is preferable and what is better is to not combine them. Unless some hardship and he faces him. He has some things he has to do or some issues that he has to take care of or he's extremely tired and, and the likes like this, then now the Meshaqa comes, he will... He will combine, but 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 if it's not there and he's it's easy for him to pray every prayer in its proper time, then this one is, this one is preferred, then this one is preferred. Also, it's allowed to combine the prayers in other situations. From them, rain or or or, or, or bad weather, and he, but not just light rain, but rather a, a rain that will bring about hardship, a rain that will bring, a, bring about hardship. And some of the people of Nala's mission, the rain that will wet in the clothes. Yabulu thiyab. Al-Matr yabulu thiyab. And the, the one that would cause the, the, the clothing to become wet. If a person went outside, it, it, it would wet in his clothes. This type, uh, this type of, of rain. If it's raining like this, then it's allowed for 
uh, but Ibra to to combine their prayers. It's allowed to com- to combine their prayers. Likewise, in snow, in heavy storms, and likewise in strong wind, in strong wind, in these situations like this, it's allowed. Even if after the rain has occurred, the rain has stopped, for example, but it has left the roads slippery. I mean, some uh, areas uh, the roads will be muddy, and there will be mud, al uh, wahal and it will be very slippery, and the lights like this. Or if there's ice, an ice storm, and then the storm stops, but it has left the roads very dangerous and slippery, and the lights like this. Also in situations and circumstances like this, because of the hardship, it's allowed, uh, it's allowed to combine the prayer. Also, in other circumstances that occur, for example, the one who is sick, it's allowed for him to combine the prayer as well. If he's sick and it's difficult for him, and it's hard uh, for him, for example, in the beginning of the Dhuhr time, he has, uh, uh, he, he's dizzy, he's very sick, he can, uh, he can barely stand up, or he can barely move, or it's very heavy on him, or difficult for him, if he thinks about getting up, it's hard, and if he tries to sit up, he becomes dizzy or he becomes sick, and the likes like this. It's allowed for him. It's allowed for him to combine, to have the intention to combine and to pray later. Or if he knows, for example, that you know, he's very tired and he's and he's sick and it's difficult for him, but he's able to pray now, then uh, and he's afraid that you know, maybe later it's going to be difficult for him, or he just wants to lay down and rest, and he, and the likes like this, then he, he's in this hardship. It's allowed for him likewise. To, to combine their prayer at either time, whichever one is easy for him. And this is from the mercy of Allah. Yuridu bikum al yusr, wala yuridu bikum al usr. Allah Azza wa Jal, He wants ease for you and he does, want a, he does not want hardship for you. So this is all, all from the beauty, the beauty of Al-Islam. Likewise, it's allowed to combine their prayer in certain situations, for example, the people of knowledge mentioned for the one who's going into surgery, whether he is the patient or the doctor. And the surgery is going to last some time between the two prayers. It's going to take up the time and he's not going to be able to, uh, to perform the, the prayer in his proper time. Well, it's going to pre- present a hardship or difficulty for him. A hardship or a difficulty for him. So therefore, it's allowed for the doctor who's going to do the surgery uh, to combine the prayers. And likewise, for the one who the, the patient who the surgery is be performed upon, for him to perform the prayers. Likewise, the people of not, as they mentioned, uh, examples of like exa- a baker, for example. If he's going to make the, uh, the, the dough and he's making the dough and if it's going to take some time and if you were to leave the dough and, and it's going to uh, become bad and it's going to yani, spoil and the likes like this it's allowed for him in this situation to combine the prayer but this is not something uh, that a person he would do daily and the people have not as they mentioned that the reason will be out of it's going to be a reason that comes yani, uh, something that's unexpected something that just happens and he finds himself in the situation not something that he does every day so a believer, he will not look for a job uh, and an occupation that will require him to combine the prayers every day and then say, oh, there's ease in their religion. La. Combining the prayer comes whenever the situation arises. And it's not a situation that is a daily situation like this. You need to combine like this. Any, you understand that? Any, this could be mixed up with the traveler. The traveler is different. The traveling has its own ruling. So the, the hardship is always found in the traveler. So even though the combining is not specific to him, so long as he's a traveler, it's allowed. So even those who are allowed to travel, this one may be exception to what I just mentioned. But any, for example, the baker or, or other than that, somebody may say he has this job or that job, and it's hard for him. And he, so then he combines his prayer every day. Then he will look for a different job. He will not take the, the deen of Allah lightly. He will not take the deen of Allah lightly. As for the travelers or those who, who drive and the likes like this, is allowed for him. And the people are not as they mentioned that. There's no blame on him if he, so long as he's a traveler, he's allowed to take his ruqas, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So the, the, the point is, this is the case. He, likewise, they mentioned, for example, the one who was pouring concrete. And he, a particular job uh, occurred, and he, on this particular job site, he, the time for pouring is at the time of the prayer, or he didn't pray yet. And, or, and it's going to go to the next prayer, and the likes like this. So therefore, it's allowed for him to combine his prayers, and he, to uh, alleviate this hardship and difficulty. And uh, this is permissible for him, alhamdulillah. With regards to combining the prayer, the one who is going to uh, combine the prayer, jamat taqdim. Jamat taqdim. Which one is that? He's going to pray the prayer the first time. He's going to pray both the prayers at the first time. He has to have the intention to combine the prayers whenever he begins the second prayer. Whenever he begins the second prayer. It's not necessary to have the intention in the first prayer. 
it's not necessary for him to have the intention in the first prayer. Jama' and taqdim. If he's going to pray, for example, dhuhr and asr, uh, together at dhuhr time. When is, it, and when is it incumbent for him to have the intention of jama' Before starting the second prayer. Before starting the second prayer. For example, if he is praying dhuhr, and then suddenly uh, it starts raining, a heavy, st a heavy storm comes in the middle. He's praying dhuhr normally. And then in the middle of dhuhr, the rain comes very hard. Very hard. It's allowed for him uh, to combine the prayer. So now in his mind, he's in the middle of the dhuhr prayer. He intends to, to make jama'. Or he's thinking about making jama'. Or it crosses his mind. And after that, maybe he'll tell the people, what do you, if it's raining hard, we, we combine. They say, nam, they, they combine the prayer. So the intention for the jama'. has to be here and whenever they open up the second prayer. Whenever they open up the second prayer. You understand that? Uh huh, because for example, the, the maybe the the rain will come in this manner, and he after the or right after the prayer, for example, but they pray dhuhr and then they go to, they go to leave the masjid. All of a sudden, it starts a downpour, or, or, or and the lights like this. So they turn around and come back and make jama. It's allowed. It's allowed. Alhamdulillah. It's, it's allowed. Alhamdulillah. As for if uh, they're going to make jama at takhir, now it's an obligation to have the intention. When? He's going to make Jema'at Takhir. They're going to pray, for example, Dhuhr and Asr now at Asr time. So when does he have to have the intention to combine now? In the time of the first one. In the time of the first one. Understand? He, if he's going to, to pray Jema'at Takhir, he's going to delay, he's going to pray, the, he's going to combine the prayers in the time of the later prayer. It's incumbent an obligation for him to intend that be in the time of the first prayer. If he did not intend that in the time of the first prayer, he waited for the first prayer to go. He delayed it out of, outside of its proper time with no uh, legislated excuse. So therefore, he would avoid that. And he meaning now, if, if he intended later, then that time of that prayer went, came and went in, entirely and finished. And he didn't pray. And he has no legislative excuse. So therefore, he fell into a major sin. Delaying the prayer from its proper time without a legislative excuse. So therefore, if a believer, he finds himself in a situation where he's going to probably make jama' uh, at takhir and he should hasten for this intention, or this should be on his mind, that he's going to gather the prayer, that he's going to gather the prayer. He would not let the prayer go out of its time without having this intention. Without having this intention. This is very important. He will not delay the prayer from its proper time without this intention. If he has this intention and he's in this situation, now it's allowed for him. And he's free of blame. And he's upon a sunnah. Alhamdulillah. But if he did not intend it, and he's negligent, he does, he, he, this, that is intended, and he lets the prayer go out all the way, and he, and he didn't intend to pray it, nor did he intend to combine it. Now he has delayed the prayer from his proper time and fallen into a major sin. And fallen into a major sin. A major sin meaning that he is exposed to the anger and the, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore the prayer is something that is, is lofty and high. And the status in Islam is great. And likewise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also in the heart of the believers. So therefore a believer, he will not be negligent with regards to this. If he's going to be in a situation where he needs to delay the prayer and combine it, combine the prayer and delay it, he will intend that. He will intend that immediately. It will be in his heart, in his mind. I know I have to pray dhuhr, but I'm going to combine it, so I'll pray it later. So now I'm still upon the straight path. And I'm still fulfilling the obligation. Is this one clear? No. If for the situation that was surgery, and you knew at 10 o'clock you're going to be in surgery, it's going to be six hours. Can you pray Zohar and Asr before the surgery at 10 o'clock in the morning? Uh huh. Good question. Jazakallah khairan. You cannot combine the prayer before it's time. You cannot, the, 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 before the prayer comes in. So the answer to the question is no. You can't pray Zohar before the time comes in. You can't pray dhuhr before the time comes in. You can only pray dhuhr when the time comes in. And then it's allowed to hasten the, the asr and pray it in combination with the dhuhr prayer at the dhuhr time. What was the definition of al jama Ada'u. Salataini fi waqti ihdahuma. Fi waqti ihdahuma. Ada'u salatain fi waqti ihdahuma. To perform both prayers in the time of one of them. So it has to be in the time of one of them. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Before you start the second, before you start the second one, and w w when does that benefit come? In the example I made, you understand? Like, it's not a requirement to have the intention to combine both prayers together at the beginning of the first prayer. And jamet takdim, because you're praying both of them, and if you're praying, for example, dhuhr and asr together, it's not at dhuhr time. When is an when is an obligation to intend to make jama? When you pray asr, no. when you pray asr, you understand? Meaning that it's not an obligation to to have that intention at the time <coughs> when you pray dhuhr, because maybe somebody's praying dhuhr and the middle of dhuhr heavy rain comes, or a heavy storm comes, they, 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 they all of a the sudden they are not expecting it. The the storm came, <laughs> you understand? And now, uh, after they pray dhuhr, they can intend to make jama. Because the situation is there, the hardship is there, the rain is there, it's allowed for them, they can do that, and the intention is good, the jamma will be good. You understand that? Now. Na. Um, uh huh. Uh huh. The muqim the, 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 uh, the praying behind the musafir. The muqim praying behind the safar, this one is an exception to that. The imam, he was only made to be followed. But if the imam is musafir, he has the rukhsa. As for the muqim, he doesn't have the rukhsa. Uh, he doesn't have the rukhsa. And there are narrations uh, likewise have come. I don't remember if it's from the prophet or from the companions. But they mentioned that they would pray and they would say behind them, أَتِمُ الصَّلَاتُكُمْ فَإِنَّا سَفْرٌ you, you, you finish your prayer because we are traveling. We're traveling. They, they mentioned that. Yani, so the point is that the muqim, he doesn't have the rukhsa. He doesn't have the rukhsa. So he will, uh, he will stand up and complete his prayer. He will stand up and complete his prayer, and this is, and this is an obligation. Uh, with regards to uh, the, the jama, again, combining the prayers, there's the issue of al-muwadat. Al-muwadat. Uh, do, do they have to be prayed back to back right away? Or can you delay some time? You understand the issue now? Somebody wanted to pray Dhuhr and Asr at, at Dhuhr time, for example. He wanted to make Jama. Is it an obligation to pray them back to back? Or is it allowed uh, for some time to pass between the two? For some time to pass between, uh, between the two? Uh, Allah knows best. Uh, it's not a condition. Uh, it's not a condition for them to be, to be back to back. Uh, and uh, the jama, what is the jama? Is a da'u salataini fi waqti ihdahuma. So long as he performed them in the the time of one of them, then this is uh, what is this is what is required. And yani, but what is best is to perform them back to back because there's a difference of opinion here. But there's no clear evidence mentioning that you have to perform them back to back. But whenever the, the they went to Muzdalifah uh, with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it's mentioned that they prayed Maghrib and Isha together. 
But it's mentioned that they prayed Maghrib, and then after that, they, they, they brought down the, the, their belongings. And then when they got there immediately, they prayed immediately. And then after that, they took down the, the belongings from the, from the animals, from the riding animals, and then they prayed. So it's mentioned here that this is a brief uh, period between the two. But uh, many of the scholars said you have to make muwalat, you have to pray them back to back. But Allah knows best, you don't have to, but it's best to, in order to avoid, to avoid this. The benefit from this now, and he's saying in these details here, is that if a person, for example, he had prayed dhuhr, for example, he's making umrah, he's making umrah, and then he, 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 he prayed dhuhr in the masjid, and then he comes back to his hotel, and he, he, he prayed dhuhr in the masjid, and he comes back to his hotel. When he gets to the hotel, the mushrif, the one in charge, he's like, you know, pack your bags, we're leaving in 30 minutes. We're going to take a bus to, to, we're leaving for Medina in 30 minutes, and we're going to be on the bus the whole time. So now, and he, it's allowed for him, based upon this position, uh, to go ahead and pray Asr in the hotel with the intention of combining, even though they're not back to back. Even though they're not back to back. So therefore, if a person is going to combine, then he should, uh, he should try to do that back to back. And if he had to stop, make wudu or do something lightly like this, it's, it's okay. It's okay, but he shouldn't intentionally uh, pray Dhuhr now and then he knows he's going to make Jama and then wait till later to pray Asr in the same time. And it's better, it's better and safer and, you, and further away from the difference of opinion to pray them back to back in this manner. But if the situation arose, it's allowed for him. It's allowed for him. We understand that? Alhamdulillah. Now. Uh huh. This review question. <laughs> What's the difference? Who, who remembers? 80, 80 kilometers. How many miles? That's the next question, right? <laughs> 40? For about approximately 49. If somebody went 49 miles, inshallah, after that, he's good. After that, he's good. He, he's good. And if he intended to travel that distance, approximately 49 miles, if he intended to travel that distance, then uh, after he left his land, and he has, after he left his city, now and he's on his path to tra travel this distance or more, now he can uh, shorten his prayer, and he can combine his prayer if he needs to. But uh, if it's lesser than that, then it goes back to the customs of the people. I, I came across a statement uh, from Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi, mentioning some narrations, uh, Rahimahullah, uh, because the narrations that we mentioned that was the 80 kilometers was derived from was the, the, the that it's not allowed for a woman who believes in Allah in the last day to travel a day and a night. So from here they got that distance. But also there are other narrations, Sheikh Ahmed and Nezmi, he mentioned to travel one day or one night, which would bring it to about 24 miles. So this is also from the, some of the statements of the scholars. We continue, inshallah. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.